No matter how much I tried, I couldn't move. I was able to blink and stop, but I couldn't move. It was like I was having a stroke. My nervous system was locked up inside and I just couldn't move. Hi guys, welcome to my channel in the lifestyle. So today is about the story time. I want to share with you guys what really happened to me. I once had the nerve lock. If you are wondering what nerve lock is, I'm going to show with you guys what what nerve lock is all about and what really happened to me. So I was affected by the patient's sudden death. I wasn't expecting her to die in that in, in such a manner. I wasn't expecting her to die, and it just happened. And this is what happened. You guys know that I'm a radiographer. If you are not aware, I'm a radiographer. That's my career. That's what I do, and I attend to patients. So radiographers have a little time to be with the patients and it doesn't really really affect us but there was this time there was this woman who was a patient and she usually used to come at the hospital and specifically to our department time after time she was being sent by doctors so that they do a checkup and see how far everything was moving so she used to come to our department, the extra department and also the scan department. And uh, many times I was the one who was attending to her. So for that reason, I became so close to her and she became so close to me. We used to chat and when we meet outside of the hospital, we used to chat as well, like finding out how she is and all that. So what happened to her was that so she used to come at the hospital. She used to come at the hospital for about three months She was coming at the hospital for about three months and You know three months is is really a long period of time. It's so hard not to know someone So I knew her and she became we became buddies. We became best buddies I can say so we became best buddies and she was booked for a surgery that was in dollars. So she went there I'm not going to say everything in detail because this is privacy so she was booked for surgery in dollar. She went in dollar and in dollar, I think things didn't go accordingly. So I, um, and I had to inquire about it because we were friends. So she told me she wasn't, everything didn't go accordingly. So she came back to her place and she started visiting our hospital. Our hospital, she was attended to each and every time. And now the sad part was that the, diagnosis that she was given was progressing they were trying to manage it and it was manageable but the diagnosis that she had or what she was found with it's something that is a fifth uh, not a 50 50 but it's something that is like maybe 90 and 10 percent 90 percent of not surviving and 10 percent of surviving the percentage of not surviving was increasing each and every time so she usually used to have a lot of different kind of um things that were coming up sometimes the hp would be low sometimes she would lose weight abruptly and all those kind of things so after three months i just received a call a call no not really a call I saw a message on WhatsApp to say she's no more. She has passed away. And that was a heavy thing. It was so hard for me to digest. And it was just so hard for me to believe because I was with her. Actually, I was talking to her the day before she died. So after that happened, my brain had to engulf that information, the sad information of losing her. It had to engulf the whole information and started digesting the information bit by bit without me realizing I was getting stressed and I was kind of getting in the um, depression phase. I was started, I started feeling like I'm, um, I, I was usually getting out of breath at times. I would have, my heart would race, my heart would beat faster than it's normal, normal beating. And that was so, it was so surprising to me because I wasn't really, really aware of what was happening to my body. I thought that it was, yeah, it was so sad for me, but I didn't really take it much deep, but my brain did. So my brain did and it was so deep and it started digesting the information. Everything was so fast and so quick. 
So as that was happening, I was stressed and I started having depression symptoms. When I was home, so we even went to the funeral house, funeral house with my friends, went to the funeral house. When I was home, the following day, the same day on a Friday, before going to the funeral house, that was on a Friday, actually, it happened on a Friday. On the same day on a Friday, when I came back from work, I went home and when I was home, I started having, having headache. I actually developed the headache around 14. I, I was working in the in the afternoon shift. So I developed the headache around 14. I received the sudden the sudden message around that was in the morning. Yeah, that was in the morning when I just woke up and um around 14 around 14 I started feeling the the headache. Before feeling the headache around 14, someone 13 when I just reported for work. I received there is this certain patient who came and he was somewhere 26 years old so he was 26 years old and according to the scan with according to the scan findings the sonographic findings the he also had the same things which the mom had so when I saw that I had to inquire to a certain doctor I had to follow a certain doctor and explain about everything so after inquiring from the doctor he told me that those kind of patients have low chances of surviving and suddenly my brain had to increase the digestion of that information because now there are two things that i have right so we have the sad thing which happened to my to the mom who died and then there's also another patient who had the same symptoms and, and sonographic features of the previous mom like what the previous mom had so now my brain started digesting two things at once and i was in the stress phase right so after that happened now i was home i started having i had migraine i had migraine around 14 14 15 16 17 so we normally knock off at 18 but my colleagues had to to pardon me and go home because it was way too severe and i thought that maybe i just worked myself but even though i thought in that way there was no much work there was no overload at work so i had to come back home around 17 hours and the headache persisted and it was so bad that i could even throw up i started throwing up i tried to find a way and how i'm going to manage the headache i had to have enough still nothing happened i switched off the light my phone was in flight mode and everything no music no noise but the headache still persisted. So around 1920, I had to call my friends because I started feeling a bit of numbness on my lower limbs or my feet. I started feeling the numbness and it wasn't severe. It wasn't, it was just mild. So I called my friends and we had to visit the hospital. So when we went to the hospital, you know, when you go to the hospital, there are vitals which are supposed to be done. The temperature was checked upon checking the BP. Once the BP machine was placed on my my arm, as they were trying to read the BP, my BP, the time the machine was becoming like so tight on my arm, the the numbness had the numbness ran like quickly from the toes up to my shoulder part, and my body became stiff, and my nerves became locked. My body was locked. I was locked inside. The shell I couldn't move I couldn't do anything my head would move the, around there and there I could speak and blink but this part was just so stiff like nothing could move my hands were like this like someone you know making like a yo I don't know why I'm making fun of this but they were so stiff all of a sudden it just had to become like this and I couldn't move everything was just so locked in there I was stiff right everything became just like what's happening what's happening this is my first time experiencing this and despite having those kind of experiences my mind just went direct to electrolytes i don't know why i was thinking about electrolytes but i was like my electrolytes are imbalanced that's the only thing that was just running around my head once i had that stiffness they run all the tests which were needed the lab test the malaria test that they had to check my bp they had to check the hp and everything and everything was normal there was nothing that was wrong everything was just normal like a normal human being like a normal and healthy person everything was just okay but i still had the stiffness 
I was locked inside there. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything apart from speaking. And I was talking. When I was talking, people were thinking that I was just making fun of. Like, maybe I, my mind was just something else. Like, I've gotten confused. But I wasn't confused. So, I was trying to talk so that I keep on my mouth running. Because I might get, it might be stiff as well. I was able to feel the heaviness of my mouth. So me talking randomly was not that I was confused, but randomly so that my mouth doesn't get stiff as well because I couldn't, I, I was, I was like, I'm not going to say anything. So the only thing that was helping me was the body warm rubbing. Like my friends used, were rubbing me, like doing a massage on my, my arm as well, my, my, my both arms and also the feet. While they had to do the rubbing like that, the heat rubbing, the body heat rubbing was what helped me to give the message to the nerves to say, this is what's happening. This part is just okay. So what happened was that my brain continued to, uh, it started sensing the threat, the, the threatening or traumatizing of my body, like my muscles were being threatened, right? right? Like it's my brain itself was being threatened by itself, right? Like the body was being threatened, like it's traumatized. So it had to lock my nerves and I couldn't move. Everything was just, there was no sense, nothing. If somebody touches me or the needle was there, nothing, I couldn't feel anything. So the heat trapping is what made my body to be, to come back to normal. And that took about, should be 10 minutes. It took about 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. I was just in that state. So... The heat rubbing was really, really helpful. Like telling my body to say, you know, like coming something like it's fine, it's fine, it is well, it is well, and all that. So, uh, what I'm trying to say, the reason why I thought of sharing with you guys about the nerve locking, in case you have someone who has experienced this before, or you you are experiencing this before, and everything is coming out normal, you can try out the heat rubbing, and also you can try some exercises. Because normally after that and i wasn't given i was only given the diclofenac injection only i was never given other medication apart from diclofenac but i'm not saying that you should take diclofenac because i took diclofenac sharing to you to say medication was i wasn't on medication or anything but the heat trapping is what helped me and that only happened once that was my first time and hopefully in wishing that that will be my last time right so after that happened, I had to do some exercises. Every time I could sit and feel a bit of numbness, I, I, I would stand up and do a bit of stretching and a bit of body rubbing and also relaxing my mind. I think I should do something about the mental part, like how we should care for our mental. So this, the, the nerve blocking came from my mind. It didn't require much medication or anything like a course of medication but the heat rubbing is what really helped me and if when i feel the a bit of numbness i do the stretching i do kind of uh just to make the system of the body to be awakened and to be like you know what we are still active we are still active we're not just seated and also managing the stress levels so that is what really um helped me and what really helps me even now so if you are experiencing such kind of a thing you can try to do the body uh body warm body warm body heat rubbing body heat rubbing or body heat massage which can be helpful and also doing a bit of exercises and relaxing your mind and making sure that you take care of your mental health so this is what happened to me guys that was something that was so surprising that it happened and i never thought about nerve locking or anything and yeah this was the story of my life and this is the story of my life thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening and see you in the next episode <laughs> bye